Welcome back to Let's Play the Remake of Final Fantasy VII. It's been a little while since I've made an episode to this. I had a problem with lost footage, thanks to a hard drive failure. Oops. And I was kind of, like, reluctant <laughs> for a long time to go and re-record the footage. Thought it wouldn't be too much of a problem, because I did have a save point at the where I would have needed to reload and play the rest of the game. But I dragged my feet and I really didn't want to do it. Eventually found out though that on my laptop I had uh, backup copies of the video footage. So I just copied them over so I can finish this series now <laughs> without playing the game again. Not that it's a bad game or anything like that, but I mean I got through it once and if I want to play it again I want to start over from the beginning and re-experience the entire thing, not just the last 15% of the game. This was a part that I... The game has some odd pacing issues. And it comes down to something I've mentioned earlier, which was that it sort of tries to open world eyes in the world of Final Fantasy VII, where instead of just having this large, expansive environment, they have these sort of hub worlds, more of a kind of um, KOTOR Dragon Age style open world where you have or uh, Mass Effect, where you would land in an area, you could pick up side quests and do that, but once you push the story forward, you move on to a different area. And then you move on to another hub world with side quests and all that kind of stuff. The problem is the story of Final Fantasy VII is a little bit too structured for that. Not that it really detracts too much from the game, first few times you have it happen, but after the pillar collapses, really distracts you from really advancing the story and bogs it down. And in a sense, kind of the same thing happens here in the Shinra Tower, where it's not as open as the other areas, not as many side quests or anything, but it, you get kind of the same feel. Cloud? Huh? You're Cloud, right? Oh. Holy shit! It's cool, bro. We went through training together. Damn. So you're still alive and kicking, huh? Some of the guys heard you got smoked. But I told them it was all bullshit. Hey, sit tight, man. I'm gonna go get Kunzel. I'll be right back. Old buddy. You okay? Yeah. But you were just... I'm good. Let's keep moving. This game actually kind of addresses a problem I had with the original game. Now, Cloud did work for Shinra. Didn't work for Shinra in the way that he thought he did, but he was definitely an employee. How is it that nobody ever recognized him? Well, in this game, you know, somebody does recognize him. Not in any important way, but you actually see it happen in uh, one of the early episodes where Cloud is on the streets of Midgar. <laughs> Knocking all the chairs over, it's funny. Uh, one of the early episodes when Cloud's on the streets of Midgar after the first bombing mission, he's actually recognized by somebody. The, his name isn't used, but the guy sees him, knows who he is. I'm guessing this isn't the same person, because that guy would have definitely said, oh yeah, you were running around killing people. <laughs> Shit. Guess maybe that might have been the Kunzel guy. We don't know who that is. I guess he'll come up in later episodes of this game series. I trust the narrative is intact. Rock solid. The people have embraced the Wutai Avalanche conspiracy wholeheartedly. I've almost come to believe it myself. Wutai's response? So far, nothing. And if those cowards do react, all the better for us and our story. Very well. Then we shall stay the course. If I may, sir. There was one other matter. Oh? A message from our man Palmer. Damn it. Baron. Yeah, yeah, I know. We came here to save Eric. That's our first priority. That's right. We only get one chance. Hojo should be at that board meeting, so that'll buy us some time. We need to plan this just right. 
I had mentioned this before, but I'm going to repeat it here. The Shinra that we're seeing in the remake seems to be in less of a firm position and control of the world than the Shinra in the original game was. The original game, Shinra had a war, probably the last war that they ever fought or would fight against Wutai. Defeated Wutai and just sort of like turned Wutai, although it didn't destroy Wutai, it had sort of lost its power and had turned into just sort of a tourist destination. Shinra seemed to have had control over the entire world. There was nowhere that Shinra didn't have its grips into, and they had their own private military still, soldier and the guards and all that kind of stuff, but they weren't really needed for anything other than fighting against terrorism like Avalanche. Shinra in the remake doesn't really seem to have as much control. Okay, so Shinra in the original game destroyed the Sector 7 plate and then blamed it on Avalanche, which would sort of rally the people to Shinra and kind of like, anybody who fights against Shinra is bad, look what these people did. This game, it they added another layer of complexity to it. Shinra is using the fighting against Avalanche as a sort of a pretense to reinvade Wutai. Feels like the Shinra in the original game, if they wanted to reinvade Wutai, they wouldn't bother giving an explanation to it. They just do it. They had that much power. Not so much in this game. What's the plan? Little bit of recon. Need to find a way to infiltrate that room. You hear the words coming out of your mouth. We just gotta find that bathroom so we can get into the air duct. Ask anyone here. They can point us in the right direction. No thanks. We can find it on our own. And this place seems to be really empty at this point, at this part of the of the level. The original version of this game, there was a lot of you went through the different floors like we're going through here, but nobody no place in it ever really felt empty. Now it was nighttime, so I guess it sort of makes sense that there aren't as many people here now. But it does feel strangely empty. Like you see a couple of workers there, but there should have been people like all over the place. I don't recognize you. Shinra never really you seems to sleep in the original game, and this one... I mean, there aren't even any bright lights. Like, why is everything lit like this? Of course, to make it look ominous, but practically it seems right. weird. I'll wait out here. Huh? You can't hang out here. Tifa, it'd be better if you waited inside. Maybe, but this is... Oh, never mind. You're right. Funny, she doesn't want to go into it because it's the men's bathroom. Oh, thank God. No one's in here. Love to show them what the ones down below look like. Come on. Let's just find that duct. Gotcha. On guard duty. Right. So, can I go with you? Don't want to be here any longer than I have to. <laughs> yeah, sure. Just follow behind. I always thought this was funny in the original version, where Cloud, there's no dialogue or anything like that. It's just sort of, you get some clues from people walking around, you talk to random NPCs, and they say, Oh yeah, the conference room always stinks. Of course, the clue being that the conference room is connected by vent to the bathroom. So somebody lays a stinker in there. Which reminds me, I worked at a place where there was an office that the, the owners were cheap and lazy when it came to... Um, when they had their building constructed. So there was a vent, because there had to be a vent in the bathroom just connected to an office that was overhead. So somebody went in there and made a big stink. The guy, that the owner, would get so pissed and he'd come down and start yelling at people. It's like, what the hell are you doing? You're leaving the... You know? <laughs> it's your own fault, you fucking idiot. 
Like, you, you should have done the job right. I mean, it was a bathroom. What the hell did you expect? This is pretty stupid, too. I mean, you're just wandering around inside of here. It should be much more straightforward. If you're going to make a slowly crawl through the vents, don't let me take a wrong turn. I mean, come on, man. What are you doing? I'm sure they're safe. But we live right by Sector 7, and I keep calling and calling, but I still can't get through. I heard that all the phone lines are down. It doesn't mean anything. You sure? Pretty sure. That's a depressing complication in the story of this. Just because um, people who work with Shinra doesn't mean you're not affected by these kinds of things, does it? Depending on the board's decision, we may start two projects simultaneously. Rebuilding the plate and the city. Members of the Urban Planning Division will likely take point on both. Director Tuesti has ordered teams to come up with three, five, and ten-year plans. Each team needs to come up with a detailed proposal and schedule. We're going to have to put a lot of man-hours into this, so we'll need to start ASAP. Does anyone have any questions at all? If not, then we'll wait for the director to return. There was another big change here. The original came put pretty much no effort into humanizing the employees of Shinra. Of course, you had the executives like Heidegger and Scarlet and all that, which and Palmer, you know, Hojo, which largely came across as a bunch of amoral monsters, you know, doing everything for greed. President Shinra and Rufus being like the driving factors behind what they do, but none of these executives, except for except for Reeve, having any kind of humanity to them. This, I mean, Shinra, though, is a much bigger company and everything than just the executives. There are people that work for Shinra, and just because they work for an evil company doesn't mean they're necessarily evil themselves, or just because they work for an evil company doesn't mean they're not people in and of themselves. They may not even be aware of all the terrible stuff that Shinra does. Or they may not be aware that the Mako reactors are slowly destroying the planet. They're probably not aware that Shinra itself is responsible for the collapse of the Sector 7 plate. So, little scenes like the woman crying because her husband or boyfriend or family or whatever probably died in Sector 7 and being consoled by another employee... You don't have to spend a lot of time with these characters to have some feeling of empathy. Just that little touch is enough to humanize them, just enough to make you feel a little bit different about them. First game sort of missed out on that. I'm telling you, I saw him. With my own eyes, sauntering down the corridor. We don't have time for this nonsense. Ah, he was as close to me as you are now. The shock of it made me spill my tea. Enough already. If there are intruders in the building, my men will deal with them. But, Mr. President, sir, I swear to you... Reeve. Sir, I have the damage assessment for Sector 7, and I'm afraid the figures are catastrophic. Spare us the doom and gloom. Uh, was there anything else? Uh, well, sir, I've also drafted a that reconstruction plan for... Huh? Not with the Ancient in our custody once more. Uh, with respect, sir, Two I don't see words, how... Two words, Reeve. <sighs> Neo Midgar. <sighs> in their promised land... We will build a new Mako-powered metropolis. Mr. President, we still don't know for sure that the Promised Land even... <sighs> Professor Hojo. The test results were within expectations. The specimen is somewhat lacking compared to her pure-blood mother, but for our purposes, she should more than suffice. So she can lead us to the Promised Land? Well, Mr. President, that remains to be seen. 
I would like your permission to secure her cooperation through more forceful means. Forceful, yet gentle. She is a precious resource that must be handled with care. Personally, I've never had a problem with torture. My armory is at your disposal should you require anything. I had something more psychological in mind. Better to scar the psyche than mar the flesh. <laughs> Proceed as you see fit. However, you will not make the same mistake twice. Is that clear? If I may, Mr. President, I have an idea how we might mitigate the risks. Simply put, we could have the Ancient reproduce. In the absence of a second specimen, we would need to identify an alternative mate. I would start with candidates from Soldier. These would, of course, include S and G types. Quite frankly, there's no telling what kind of properties a crossbred specimen might possess. So, what say you all? <sighs> hmm. <sighs> if there is nothing else... Mr. President! Meeting adjourned. Uh, please, sir! Something stinks. Anything? The man in the lab coat. Head of R&D. We follow him. Okay. And then we kill the son of a bitch. Not until he's led us to Aerith. That's the plan. It's discovered later on in the original game that the Promised Land doesn't exist. At least not in the way that Shinra hopes it would. President Shinra, whatever the hell his actual name is seems to believe that the Promised Land is just a physical place where Mako or Mako or whatever is so abundant that they don't even need to build reactors. They can just sort of... They don't need to suck it out of the ground. It'll just sort of come out on its own. So it's much more cost-efficient to build the city there than the Midgar that they have now. And that seems to be what he's planning on doing here. Reeve wants to rebuild the city that they have. Shinra... Uh, President Shinra doesn't, sees it as a waste of time, no effort's going to go into rebuilding it, and I guess there isn't going to be any effort put into sort of like disaster relief for the people that survived. So, you know, that happens. Walking the halls of this very building, who would have believed it? I wonder... Hmm, were I to arrange a face-to-face? -face? <laughs> How I should like to meet their offspring. Ah, uh, but that can wait. First, we must have answers. A simple psychoactive agent should suffice. Nothing likely to cause any long-term damage. <laughs> Let's go. Right. I wonder how... Um, <laughs> Sephiroth is being seen wander around. Because in the original game, Sephiroth was not actually seen by the characters roaming the world until he's discovered in the um, northern continent. The thing that you see wandering around disguised as Sephiroth was actually Genova. Genova has yet to break out of uh, of its confinement, so I wonder what we're actually seeing. Then again, Cloud has been seeing like sort of hallucinations of Sephiroth, so I guess maybe that's what everybody else is seeing. Hojo, however, wants to. <laughs> arrange a meeting, seemingly arrange a meeting between Sephiroth and 
and Aerith because he wants to crossbreed them to see what the offspring would end up being. Originally, um, it seemed to have been thought that Genova itself was an ancient, but it seems pretty clear by this point Hojo knows that Genova is not. In fact, I guess they all know that Genova is not because they do have Genova in the building, but they seem to be more, more interested in Aerith on account of being an actual true ancient, not just an alien uh, disguised as one. 